all seems calm and quiet on our coastal medieval village, but something's about to shake this township up. And nothing shakes things up quite like an undifferentiated chest pain patient. We cover the cardiac and non-cardiac differential diagnosis of chest pain and other sketches. And in this sketch, we'll focus on ruling in or out life-threatening causes. So let's assess the threats so that we can plan to keep this town safe. Perched high above the town entry gates is our number one primary sentry, who's always on the lookout for castle robbers and life-threatening causes of chest pain. Since the initial assessment of a chest pain patient always starts with a primary survey and rapid assessment of airway, breathing, and circulation, nobody gets past this guard without checking off the ABCs. And he'll make sure patients who appear ill or are high risk are placed on a cardiac monitor, continuous pulse ox, and any abnormal vital signs are addressed with appropriate airway management, oxygen therapy, and IV fluids. There's a reason why he's our number one primary sentry. Fortunately, there's another line of defense spanning across the entryway. As you can see from the ECG wave looking barrier, no villager with chest pain passes through without getting ECG immediately after initial stabilization. The ECG is the best initial test for all forms of chest pain, and the most important one for identifying acute coronary syndrome. Specifically, ST elevation myocardial infarction, or STEMI, which is marked by our recurring elevated ST sign. But if the initial ECG findings aren't specific enough, additional tests should be ordered. Our sentry has raised this skull and crossbones flag, our recurring symbol for an x-ray, to signal that most patients should get a chest x-ray. And he's poured himself some fine wine in a couple of test tubes because patients should also get laboratory studies, such as a CBC and a chemistry panel. And nothing pairs better with fine wine than this meaty T-bone steak our symbol for cardiac troponin. Further management depends on the diagnosis, which... What, did you... Do you hear heavy footsteps approaching? Well, we knew we'd be having company, and it looks like the head honcho has arrived, and his sights are set on the elevated ST street sign. That's because he's our STEMI manager, and he's sporting this ASA umpire helmet because he's officiating the STEMI management playbook, which begins with the rapid administration of aspirin. Since aspirin lowers mortality, it's critical to administer it while calling the cath lab, and should be given with a second antiplatelet drug. And because STEMI patients require either emergent thrombolytic therapy or percutaneous coronary intervention, more commonly referred to as BCI, which is when a balloon is threaded through a person's arteries to burst apart a clot. This balloon here is tied to his leg to help you remember that coronary balloon angioplasty is preferred over thrombolytic therapy because it's associated with greater survival and mortality benefits. You also might notice that our STEMI manager is donning a hunting vest. That's because he moonlights as the heparin hunter, our symbol for another therapy used in conjunction with PCI, heparin. He's also an overly prepared hunter bringing along a box of nitro filled with nitrates for when he needs to blast away the chest pain. <laughs>